Good morning. Yesterday I talked about how much gentleness means to me, how much part of my life it's become. And it's still in the process of becoming. I can only see more and more gentleness. And it's one of those things. There can't be too much. So, part of, and I gave some of the obvious rewards. Peace. Being at ease. Being peaceful. Being without an agenda. Even being without a purpose, at least a, not a readily observable purpose, purpose in the sense of accomplishment, purpose in the sense of doing, gentleness is just about being. And I also touched upon yesterday, and the day before, the, probably the day before that, how different, in many ways, clarity and silence are, even though one is heralded to lead to the other. Silence will lead to clarity. And there's been a very rigorous, on my part, examination. Cost and gentleness, by the way, <laughs> about some unique differences that I saw. Clarity doesn't lend itself readily to be added to While silence, on the other hand, is not about taking something away from. The nature of silence is inclusive. It does, after all, have the seeds of its polarity, communication within. And clarity and this polarity, doubt, although I've learned to see that doubt is a seed within clarity. That celebrates its commonality with its polarity as does everything about each and every polarity. But as you add more doubt to clarity, it doesn't become clear. What it does is stirs up the waters, adds something that inhibits the clearness of the water. And this propels you to change to deal with the doubt by expansion, absor absorption, absorption, so that your waters 
could still again so clearly can return. And what you start seeing when you see that nothing is permanent other than what we are, everything else is illusory, is maya. Once you see that change is inevitable, you relax into an understanding based on careful observation. Careful observation bordering, bordering on meticulous. Meticulous in the sense that measuring smaller and smaller units of change, recognizing change in lesser and lesser degrees, not having to wait till change has gotten so much bigger that it's upon you. And perhaps this can be one of the gifts of clarity. That you're more sensitive to change. You can register change. And as everything, as your understanding intensifies, things speed up. So the sooner that you notice that something is afoot, some element of change is beginning to cloud your, care, your clarity if it entails doubt. Clarity is only lessened by doubt. And as we see now, this process will return clarity to its balance. But it's only through doubt. As your doubt lessens, as you surrender to gentleness, an immediate consequence of increasing intensity is the beauty of relaxation. It's only in peace. It's only as your fears are put to rest. It's only as you start to understand the nature of change. Change is inevitable. Change is coming. Change is here. It's inevitable. And today I'm using this quantification, inevitable, to embrace relaxation. Relax into the inevitable. What will be, will be. So to be anxious, to anxiously anticipate, to try to avoid, to even go as far as trying to ignore the obvious as it becomes more and more obvious, consequently, 
more and more effort is put into not recognizing refusal to recognize what is as you embrace this as you see that it's part of a natural rhythm it is indeed it does indeed contribute to the song of the universe as does all truths I breathe deeply here because it resonates so much within as I say these words relax relax into the inevitable and in this state of relaxation what do you do walk on as Christmas Humphreys said walk on take the next step take the next step on your journey that's all you need to do take the next step walk on stagnation is an element of ending Stagnation is based on refusal to deal with the immediate, Fr refusal to deal with change. Stagnation becomes doubt. Stagnation is a seed of doubt, and doubt by its very nature, begins the process of clouding any clarity, even a hope of clarity, that we might be entertaining. So this relaxing, this letting go, letting go of expectations, both from without as well as from in, from the inward source, from the inner source. Acceptance is the springboard into surrender. So relax into this process. Remove the pressure of achievements, of measurements, of accomplishments, of accolades, and replace them with abundant acceptance of the universal. Remember, if an idea, thought, or word leads to or includes separation, 
division, then it's a word, thought, or idea that needs to be eliminated through your process of solving. Learning what to eliminate is a good first step, isn't it? And as you are learning to eliminate obstacles, needless obstacles, you start to understand the freedom that surrender, the beauty of surrender and rewards to surrendering lead one to love, universal love, acceptance of what's so. And these, indeed, are the jewels of self-inquiry. Equanimity as a reward for spiritual inquiry as a condition that becomes more and more possible to maintain continuously is through your self-reflection, your self-inquiry. And once arriving at equanimity, it's really not a difficult state to maintain. It only gets easier when you learn that things that upset your equanimity have absolutely no value. Uh, sorry, I'm squinting. I'm just trying to read a note to myself. <laughs> it's really amazing to me that I have to, that my eyes are not working as well as they should when I get up. It takes me a while to focus. And I notice as I watch these tapes, there's two things I do a lot. This, and I'm always adjusting my glasses or my beats, I start to see my patterns. And part of the adjustment of the glasses is maybe if I adjust them, it will be clearer. I can attain a state of clarity, at least temporarily, to read well. Because I like to write notes to myself. I like to put reminders, very brief, but reminders that help. And to re today's reminders was about the ease of relaxing into clarity and yeah, into equanimity, the ease. Clarity, on the other hand, 
most times is not as easy. Certainly, I haven't been successful of sustaining clarity. I do get more and more glimpses, especially as I relax from the intense discipline that I previously placed on the attainment of clarity. The work to silence the mind. You can tame the mind quite easily. The recognition of what's real and what's not. In the beginning, what's real seems smaller than what's not real. But as you explore the nature of what's real, you'll find that what's real is huge and it completely overshadows what's not real. There's no limitations of in realness and that of course is where abundance, the secret to abundance lies in this recognition of how huge and all-encompassing the real truly is. And the not real, which was in the beginning, the unreal, the maya, which appears to be so huge. We're putting down everything that we thought we knew, felt, believed, putting it down, taking the load off our shoulders, relaxing. And it seems that not much is left. Now, when you've recognized what's not real, you have time to relax into an understanding of the overwhelming hugeness of what is. So, equanimity, other than Paying attention, other than acceptance of the inevitable, it doesn't require much maintenance to stay in a state of equilibrium. Once you accept the eternal, once you accept that you can watch change come and go in the comfort of, in the unity of, in the company of eternal, lasting peace, light, and love that's inclusive, that includes all of us and the essence of everything. As long as you remember these things and a daily reminder of surrender is important. For me, it's a practice that I've incorporated into my daily patterns of living. Whereas bliss and 
clarity have to date been difficult, impossible. <laughs> I don't like that word, impossible. It's all within the realm of possibilities. But it hasn't been a state of mind, of being, that I've been able to maintain continuously. And as I looked at both of them, bliss is the input of way too much energy and I feel that I will reach a state of bliss a constant state of bliss when the time is close to the ending of this physical form. As I experience more and more bliss, I know, I recognize that change is coming as it always has and as it continue as it continues to always happen. And clarity, maintaining a constant state of clarity, means that the seed of doubt within, the communication within, doesn't grow. And <laughs> I don't know if I got that right. I think I didn't get that right. The sea of clarity is doubt. I talked about the seed of silence, which is communication. And perhaps this is my confusion at this point because normally as I speak my words take me where they take me but this time I'm deeply involved in looking at silence in looking at silence as communication and recognizing that my personal journey into silence is increasing. I feel myself impelled towards silence, a silence that will not include my teachings I'm sharing with you. I can see endings looming 
and am completely relaxed and okay. I've relaxed into the inevitable. This change will come. This ending will occur. But endings, after all, are necessary for new beginnings. And this is what I feel I'm on the cusp of new beginnings. And that makes me smile. So the difficulty that I have encountered in maintaining consistent clarity, remaining in a state of clarity. Anything that gets out added to clarity signifies change into lack of clarity. Any doubt, as doubt grows, as it will, try to stop, try to stop the cycle of growth. Good luck with that. In the cycle of growth, beginnings, middles, and endings result in what we see as change. Without change, we stagnate. So an understanding that maintaining these two conditions, desirable conditions, conditions that we work towards, bliss and clarity, to reconcile on a personal level an understanding of what they are and to in understand, embrace, and accept that you can enjoy them no matter how brief the state of mind remains with you. Accept, trust, be gentle, and relax. <laughs>